Are you working in a company that uses open source software? Is your next job interview with one? Or is your client using open source software? Do you wish you could read their minds as to what they really think about open source software? Well, you don't have to be a mind reader. Just watch this video and find out. Open source is taking over the world one collaboration at a time. Over the last 10 years, I have seen open source grow and go from strength to strength, but we do have some challenges in open source. For example, time. When you have limited time to spend working on your side project, when what you really want to do is work on it full time. Funding. How do you apply for it? Will this process take you away from working on the project? Will it be enough? Security. Who is responsible for finding, prioritizing and fixing security issues? I have a question for you. What do you think is the most popular type of open source project? Operating system? Runtime? Database? Monitoring? I bet you all said operating system, right? You were thinking about Linux. Well, the correct answer would be databases or cache. These are the most popular and widely used open source projects. Where am I getting all this information from? Well, it's that time of year when VMware Tanzu produces a report called The State of the Software Supply Chain Open Source Edition, and I want to share with you my opinion on their insights. I'm going to start off with some bad news. One stat that makes me sad from last year's report, 95% of respondents said they used open source software in production. But this year, only 90% said they did. Why is there a 5% drop in using open source software in production if we know that open source is getting more popular? Let's go through this report and see if we can learn more about the last 12 months and see where open source is going. The report is split into four sections. Open source software fulfills its promise. Do benefits match expectations? Open source software headwinds. Are some trends moving in the wrong direction? Security risks dominate. Do these concerns affect using open source software in production? And tools, tasks, and teams. I've pulled out the information I think is the most important to you, but let this video be a taster and go and download the full report, which I have linked in the description below. The report this year has doubled the amount of participants compared to last year, with almost 1,200 respondents from a wide range of industries and job levels. Last year, VMware Tanzu report surveyed only large companies. This year, given the growth in cyber attacks, they have also highlighted the concerns and challenges which are faced by smaller companies with less than 100 employees. It is really interesting to see that 43% of large companies surveyed only had between 1 to 50 software developers. So the bigger the company doesn't mean it has more developers. So which industries are these companies from? Well, the largest represented is the technology industry with 18% and other major sectors include finance services, healthcare, telecommunications, manufacturing, and education, with each making up 9% of the total. The first section of VMware Tanzu's report called Open Source Fulfills Its Promise found that a staggering 99.8% of respondents who use open source in production said that their organization benefited from, you guessed it, open source. The main five benefits were cost efficiency, increased flexibility, support from a large community, developer productivity, and the team could work with their preferred technology. I agree with this because as a developer, we want flexibility to swap in and out different open source tools, having support from a large active community when we run into technical challenges. Plus, we love to learn new technologies, but we also really love to work with our preferred ones too. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the most used open source software this year was databases or cache at 75%, runtimes like the JVM for 71% of the respondents, operating systems made up 70%, and container orchestration made up 59%. While container orchestration did make the list of the most used open source software, it was towards the end of the list. In its defense, it is the new kid in school compared to others. So I'm curious to see how it compares next year as Kubernetes is one of the most popular open source projects. The report shows that larger companies focus using open source software which benefits DevOps, while smaller companies are using open source software more to help them on day-to-day -day of running of their business, such as ERP, CMS, 
e-commerce and WordPress. It is clear that organizations who took part in the survey, and in my opinion, most companies, benefit from open source. However, it may come as no surprise that there are some challenges for open source adoption. And I wonder if these challenges are the reason that, according to a report, there was a 5% drop from last year in companies who use open source software in production. If you are thinking, what are these challenges? Well, I thought the same. According to the report, 44% of respondents are still figuring out how to manage open source software in production. 38% don't see sufficient support for open source. 34% don't trust open source software. What is really interesting is fewer companies have a policy against using open source software in production versus last year. However, fewer are actually putting open source into production. In my view, if more open source projects were better financed, then this would mean that there would be more time to work on them, resulting in more support available for those using the product, which would in turn increase overall trust that companies have in open source software. But it is not just a concern on how to manage open source in production, which is considered a challenge. This year, 94% of respondents had concerns about running open source software in production, with security concerns being at the top of the list. The top concern with 57% of the respondents was that in their opinion, there is no guarantee that vulnerabilities will be remediated or patched. This may be a valid concern, but the majority of the time, I would bet open source has a faster rate at getting vulnerabilities fixed compared to closed source projects. As open source maintainers and contributors are not restricted to business hours and can easily span several time zones. An interesting stat is that 35% of those who participated in the report felt that open source software changes too quickly to fully evaluate risk. Yes, open source can move fast, particularly with so many people contributing, which is one of its benefits. But in tech, it is good practice to iterate little and often, as this massively reduces the risk of change impacting the product in a negative way. For those who come from a background where you see one Big Bang release every year, I do understand it can take some time to adjust to the frequent product changes. But trust me, it is more efficient and fun this way. Last year's report found that too many tools, too many manual tasks, and too many teams are involved in packaging open source software at most companies. Unfortunately, as fast as tech moves, little has changed this year. 70% of companies use two or more tools for this. But maybe the benefit of using more focused tools, but multiples of them, is that it doesn't tie us into a single tool and allows us the flexibility depending on the project and team. Packaging tasks remain evenly split between development and the DevOps team. As company size increases, the responsibility of packaging shifts from development to the DevOps team. This is what I have seen from my experience as well. 56% of respondents use software the community has already packaged. I actually expected this percentage to be higher because of the convenience and speed of using a community-built and highly tested package. However, I do understand that the bigger the company, the more control they wish to have over what is included in the package. According to the report, smaller companies are more likely to use pre-built community packages rather than do it themselves. Difficulty to track dependencies installed by package managers increased from last year at 40% to 45% this year. If you are a developer and have ever done NPM install, then I'm sure you can relate to this. When we install an NPM package, we don't check all the dependencies that that package brings in. The downside of complex packaging is that it takes more time to deploy critical patches. You know what it is like when we need to fix a critical bug and then we have the fix. The next step is to get the new release out as quickly as possible. 61% stated that it takes more than a day to deploy a critical patch with an astonishing 12% requiring more than a week. This is an area where small companies appear to perform much better. Almost half of the companies with 100 or fewer employees can deploy a critical patch in less than a day, and almost 25% can get the job done in a few hours or less. From the report, it seems that everyone wants better security and clearer overarching visibility that highlights any areas of concerns. There are tools popping up all the time to help with this, even on GitHub itself, and these are improving all the time. Plus, I'm sure more will keep being developed and hopefully companies will have the reassurance that they need to be able to be fully invested in open source. To wrap up, I really love this line from the report. 
Open source software is a critical element of the software supply chain in companies of all sizes, because I believe this is very true in having worked in small startups to large organizations. As more decision makers are getting involved in the open source conversation, this will increase the chance of open source software being used in organizations, which will naturally have the effect of more funding being channeled into open source projects. It is a report like this one compiled by VMware Tanzu that gives developers like me an insight into what companies think of open source software, how they approach it, what benefits and challenges they see. Whether you're working in a company that uses open source software, thinking of applying for a position in one that does, or your clients are companies that use open source software, this report provides valuable insights. I hope you have enjoyed my take on VMware Tanzu, the state of software supply chain open source edition. I recommend you have a look at the full report, which you can download for free on the link in the description below.